We're now going to move on and look at the basics of how HPLC works. So we take that very, very fundamental chemistry that we looked at in the previous section and now start to get it working in an applied sense in HPLC. Let's get moving and really HPLC is simply a dynamic version of the separating funnel. In reverse phase, the moving bit, the mobile phase, is water. And the stationary bit, the stationary phase, is oil, a long chain hydrocarbon. By far the most common is something called C18, a long chain of 18 carbons with all the gaps filled in by hydrogens. And the C18 is chemically bonded to particles inside a steel tube. So what we have here are these little, tiny little particles which have C18 bonded on. So we have a, a stationary set of beads packed inside this column C18 on them, very oil-like, but they're not going anywhere. And then through the column, we pump a water-based mobile phase. So it's a bit like the separating funnel, except now we have one bit of it, the water bit of it is moving. And to separate compounds, we need them to have some affinity for the stationary phase. They have to have carbons and hydrogens that will stick to the long chain hydrocarbon on the stationary phase. And affinity for the stationary phase is something called retention. And we measure retention as a retention time in minutes, how long it takes for a molecule to make its way along the length of the column and out the other side. And if we look at what goes on at the stationary phase, um, we have a mixture of molecules that comes along. The red molecules have higher affinity for the stationary phase. The blue ones have less affinity for the stationary phase. They start to separate as we move through the column. The first substance comes out at 1.7 minutes. The second substance, which is retained longer, comes out at 3.25 minutes. So we can take this dynamic process of the separating funnel and we can use that to separate out substances that have very very similar chemical structures and chemical performance. So non-polar compounds have high affinity for oil. The oil is the stationary phase which means that they have very long retention times. They take much longer to come out of the column because they have a high affinity for the stationary phase which means they spend a lot of their time not moving, a lot of their time stationary. Polar compounds have a low affinity for the oil and also a very high affinity for the water mobile phase. So they spend more time in the mobile phase and they come through the column more quickly. They have short retention times. We can exploit tiny differences in polarity, differences in retention time to separate out substances and that's fundamentally how HPLC works. Chromatogram then is what the HPLC system generates and what we have along the bottom here is a time index that tells us how long it takes for the substance to come out after it's been injected. So it's a bit like starting a stopwatch when we inject the substance onto the column. We start the stopwatch, it's timing how long it takes. When the first substance comes out of the end of the column and goes into the detector, we get a peak and that peak, our target analyte, takes 2.808 minutes to come through the column and it's a very very accurate and precise technique. If we were to inject this sample again and again and again we pretty much get exactly the same retention time. And we've got a second compound here which has taken longer to come out of the column about 3.792 minutes and what we've done is we've taken two substances which chemically are very similar but we now have them separated out and that's HPLC. There's a lot more to it than that. We really need to tailor the conditions to get acceptable retention and separation. Although the columns are usually C18, the mobile phase is extremely complex mixture and usually extensively modified. It contains water, which is absolutely the foundation component. We must retain a mobile phase that has the opposite polarity to the C18, the oil-like stationary phase. It's essential that any water we use is consistent and very pure. Small differences in the water upset the complex chemistry underpinning HPLC and minute levels of impurities can cause major problems with the stability, precision, accuracy of 
the HPLC process that we've set up. In addition to the water, we usually have an organic. The most common ones are, are methanol and acetonitrile. And what we do is that these substances make the mobile phase more oil-like. So if we have substances that are retaining very strongly onto the stationary phase, adding organic then gives the molecules a reason to want to come off the stationary phase and go into the mobile phase. And we use that to take compounds that have strong affinity off the stationary phase of the column and get them to actually loot through. In addition to the organic then we usually have something that adjusts the pH and we must control the pH of the mobile phase. And in addition to that we must stabilise the pH of the mobile phase and for that we use a buffer. Why then is pH so important? So pH affects the retention time of compounds. If we change the pH of the mobile phase, we change the retention of compounds which have polar functional groups. A polar functional group have two forms when we dissolve them in water. So on this side we have an uncharged form and on this side we have a charged form. That This has taken an H plus from solution, stuck that H plus on and become positively charged. If we have an acid, it does the opposite, it donates its H plus into the, the water and leaves a negatively charged substance behind. The charged form, the ones on this side, are much more soluble in water. They will prefer the mobile phase, less affinity for the stationary phase, they will have shorter retention times. So if we don't control pH, then we end up that the substance has a very unstable retention time. So the uncharged form is less soluble in water. It will prefer the stationary phase and give us longer retention. Mobile phase pH controls this equilibrium, this reaction. We can shift this one way or the other to make the substance charged or uncharged by modifying the pH of the mobile phase. Isocratic analysis um, is effectively each compound needs an optimal individual ratio of aqueous and an amount of organic in the mobile phase to give optimal retention time and peak shape. So we have a tailored ratio of methanol versus water that we use to get the analyte off the column within a sensible period of time. Isocratic elution is when we run a fixed ratio of mobile phase, so it might be 70% water. 30% methanol for the entire analysis. We It just sticks at that one ratio all the way through. Isocratic really only works when we test small numbers of compounds with similar polarity. For simple mixtures then it can be very quick, simple and repeatable and we can do it on any type of HPLC. However for complex mixtures or compounds with different polarities, isocratic methods have significant disadvantages. And one of the disadvantages that we have is that we can end up with very, very long run times. So this is taking an hour to get these substances out. And that we get poor resolution, poor separation of early peaks. Peaks that are not seeing in the column particularly long will not be well separated. But we have other substances up here that are looting very late, that we don't, they're, they're sticking in the column too long and they spread out and give us very, very poor peak shape and poor sensitivity. So we end up with a long run time, long retaining peaks give us poor peak shape and we really can't contain, we use them with mixtures that contain large numbers of substances, probably any mixture that's got a greater number than 10 peaks, we are going to struggle to do that on an isocratic set of conditions. The other thing that we get is that contamination builds up in the column. The mobile phase isn't strong enough to elute substances that have very, very high affinity for the stationary phase. The second technique we have is something called a gradient. So a gradient method is when we steadily increase the ratio of organic over a runtime. So it would be something like this. When we start the analysis, we have a very, very high concentration of water. That's giving us optimal retention for substances that have very low affinity for the stationary phase. Very small amount of methanol. Over 10 minutes, we're going to move from 95% water 
very steadily down to 0% water while simultaneously increasing the amount of organic over that. So we're going 95% water, decreasing to 0% water, and the methanol is increasing from 5% up to 100%. We then swap back to the starting conditions and leave it for uh, a length of time to re-equilibrate. What this does is it allows the mixture to reach an optimal value to elute each compound in turn. So effectively it's having an infinite number of isocratic ratios. It's constantly changing through the run. Every substance in the mixture reaches the optimal ratio that it needs to move through the column at a sensible rate. And this allows the separation of many peaks of different polarities. It's reliable and repeatable with modern equipment. It gives shorter run times than isocratic, particularly if the sample contains lots of compounds. And it gives good peak width for all peaks, even those with very long retention time. When we are using gradient methods, then it's important that we use very good quality water. Water is the weak solvent. It cannot elute substances that have any real degree of retention or affinity for the stationary phase. It can't remove contamination from the system. Any contamination that is brought by the water into the system sticks to the column, it builds up, the water itself cannot remove that and effectively what we have is that the water is contaminating the system and that's building up because the water simply isn't strong enough to remove any contamination that builds up. And when organic concentration rises, the impurities then start to elute as peaks. HPLC is very sensitive and it will detect tiny quantities of contamination in water. And if we look at that with uh, an animation, what we have is that the water that is constantly eluting through with the gradient as the organic concentration comes up, we eventually reach a critical point where the contamination that has been brought on by the water elutes, and then we get these huge peaks that appear in our chromatogram. And that's really not what we want because these peaks will interfere with the substances that we're interested in. HPLC method the set of conditions that we set up in order to perform analysis is an extremely complex blend of many interrelated parameters. So that includes the mobile phase pH, the buffer that we use, the buffer concentration, the molarity of buffer that we work with, the organic modifier, so whether we use methanol or acetonitrile, the gradient conditions, the column chemistry, the column dimensions, how we prepare the sample and the solvent that we use. Water is a key component for most of these parameters here so it's critical that we have good quality water in order to get any degree of consistency from our HPLC analysis.